There's a lot of genuine anti-vax nonsense spouted about the COVID-19 vaccines, which is usually some approximate variation of Bill Gates was in cahoots with the global pharmaceutical industry to create a bioweapon for the purpose of exterminating the majority of the Earth's population, all of which is based on malicious misreporting of things that Bill Gates has actually said, and so misunderstanding on the part of the gullible people who just love to hear that kind of thing and therefore lap it up. Gates is probably the most misquoted person on the planet. There is no basis for that conspiratorial gobbledygook. And I don't say that for YouTube reasons. YouTube has kind of chilled out somewhat since their worst excesses of the past four years. I say it because of the nature of this video and the fact that I don't want any of that nonsense spreading on to me. All of that is conspiratorial gobbledygook. On the other hand, this is not conspiratorial gobbledygook. Kevin Maguire, who is the uh, infamous editor of the Daily Mirror newspaper, made this charming comment while commenting on Rishi Sunak's appearance on GB News the other day. Version of that then, because that was the well, not with them. Well, well, I, think he, I think you would, but did you watch the, the bit where some anti vaxxer went on and on and on? That's uh, soon I think the two of them, I think. Uh, why would Keir Starmer subject himself to that? That was in relation to a punchy speech given by vaccine injured John Watt, of which this is an 80 second clip. My name is John Watt, and I'm one of the COVID vaccine injured in this country. I want you to look into my eyes, Rishi Sunak, and I want you to look at the pain, the trauma, and the regret I have in my eyes. We have been left with no help at all. Not only am I in here that's vaccine injured, there's another man over there whose life's been ruined by that COVID-19 vaccine. I know people who have lost legs, amputations. I know people with heart conditions like myself, Rishi Sunak. Why have I had to set up a support group in Scotland to look after the people that have been affected by that COVID-19 vaccine? Why are the people who are in charge, who told us all to do the right thing, have left us all to rot and left me and the thousands and the tens of thousands in this country to rot? Rishi Sunak looked me in the eye. When are you going to start to do the right thing? The vaccine damage payment scheme is not fit for purpose. In Scotland right now, according to the yellow card system, there are over 30,000 people that have had an adverse reaction to that vaccine. That is what provoked Kevin Maguire's comments. Did you watch the, the bit where some anti-vaxxer went on and on and on? That's, uh, soon after so, just for the record, did you watch the bit where some anti-vaxxer went on and on and on at Sunak? I think there were two of them. Why would Sir Keir Starmer subject himself to that? Some anti-vaxxer going on and on and on and on. In other words, some amorphous, indistinguishable member of that disreputable group who was dribbling out conspiratorial nonsense. Our friend, I'm sure, has a case for defamation against Kevin Maguire here, and I think there are very good reasons, potentially, for pursuing one. Maguire didn't actually specifically name him, but John Watt is clearly identified through his comments and the context, so that's not an obstacle. I'll skim through the relevant guidance here. A defamatory statement is one which injures the reputation of another person. It tends to lower him in the estimation of right-thinking members of society generally. A statement will amount to a slander if it is published, so we can tick that box, and made orally in some other transient form, and we can tick that box too. Section 1.1 of the 2013 Defamation Act introduced a new test which provides that a statement is not defamatory unless its publication has caused or is likely to cause serious harm to the reputation of the claimant. Defence is. Truth is the first defence. We can park that one for now. Then privilege is irrelevant. Then public interest. That is, opinion which any person could honestly hold based on facts known at the time, and that it was reasonably believed that publishing the statement complained of was in the public interest. We know the statement was published, so we can tick those boxes. Is it the case that the anti-vaxxer description tends to lower him in the estimation of right-thinking members of society generally and cause, or is likely to cause, serious harm to the reputation of the claimant? That is the key test. 
So what is an anti-vaxxer? An anti-vaxxer is a person who opposes the use of some or all vaccines, regulations mandating vaccination, or usually both. Like it or not, that is the definition of anti-vaxxer, the new speak version, anybody who also opposes regulations making vaccination compulsory. So is there anything in John Watts' 60-second speech which Kevin Maguire can bring to justify what he says? That is a copy of what he said. Is there anything in there that can justify the anti-vaxxer slur and so represent any kind of a truth defence? The sheer fact that the man took fully three Covid vaccines is pretty powerful rebuttal of the allegation that he's somehow opposed to the Covid vaccine. I mean, what he did back then isn't necessarily representative of his position now, but still, that is pretty powerful rebuttal of the allegation. But it really comes down to anything which he specifically said on that occasion which supports the anti-vaxxer slur. That's what he said. I would challenge anyone to find anything there that can justify it. So that leads to the defences, starting with true in substance and in fact. Is the anti-vaxxer slur defensible on the basis of fact. That will be for others to decide. Does any of this support the definition? I don't think so. The next two are about privilege, which is not relevant. Then public interest, that is opinion which any person could honestly hold based on facts known at the time and that it was reasonably believed that publishing the statement complained of was in the public interest. So you have to honestly believe your opinion and think that it's in the public interest. Is this even a statement of opinion, much less one in the public interest? Did you watch the, the bit where some anti-vaxxer went on and on and on at uh, Sunak? Sounds more like a claim of fact to me, not an opinion. That's about it as far as the defences go anyway. The statement is a slur. Anti-vaxxer is a slur. The statement is slanderous. It lowers him in the estimation of the average person, so it is a slanderous statement. It doesn't seem to be factual, and it doesn't seem to have any kind of a public interest defence. So, does it do him serious reputational harm? The GB News video alone has had well over 2 million views now, and it'll have been disseminated a lot more than just there. And of course, it was on prime time national TV, so he had a reputation absolutely at the end of Monday evening, beyond which he already had before that, which Kevin Maguire went on to trash to a very large audience, a very large publication, on Tuesday morning. So serious reputational harm, as in likely to cause serious harm to the reputation of the claimant, and with no truth or public interest defence, it looks that way to me. And you might add that there is a, a public interest on the other side, on his side, as in since the feet dragging over compensation for the injured is operating at glacial pace on the part of the establishment, it's in the public interest to ensure that this kind of trivialising is swiftly dealt with so it can't muddy the waters any more and make them drag their feet any more slowly. As in, this kind of trivialising. Did you watch the, the bit where some anti-vaxxer went on and on and on at uh, I think the two of them, I think. Uh, why would Keir Starmer subject himself to that? I say it is actually in the public interest to set up a GoFundMe or a Give, Send, Go or whatever to start raising the necessary funds and get a slander case off the ground.